Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Nunes and uh, Ranking Member Reinhell and the members of the subcommittee. Uh, it's a great honor to be in front of you today uh, on such an important issue. My name is Judy Hawley. I am testifying before this subcommittee as chair of the Port Commission of the Port of Corpus Christi. I'm pleased to have served in the Texas House uh, for eight years, served on energy and transportation committees, and chaired the Southern States Energy Board for a couple of years as well. The Port of Corpus Christi, just to orient you, is the fifth largest port in terms of tonnage in the United States. In addition, 86% of the port's tonnage comes from energy. It, that's our historical base. Historically, we have been an importer of heavy crude. But in the past year, the Port of Corpus Christi has become, uh, as many ports have, a major exporter. The port serves as a nexus for the input of stakeholders and interested parties ranging from our local communities to international businesses. In my 10 years on the Commission, I have a bird's eye view of the local economic impact of federal energy policy and a broader view of how energy policy can affect local, national, and international issues. Locally, it is hard to overestimate the economic benefits resulting from the energy exploration and development of the Eagle Ford Shale formation in Texas. In a few short years, the Eagle Ford Shale has become the largest single oil and natural gas development in the world based on capital expenditures, creating over $61 billion in economic impact and over 116,000 full-time jobs with an annual payroll of almost $5 billion. But may I emphasize again that the growth in the energy sector translates to growth in jobs. Our unemployment rate in South Texas had consistently been well below the national average. Uh, it is now below the national average, and that includes the influx of new workers coming in seeking jobs. We're now at 5.5 percent unemployment, which is historic for us. But more than just addressing the unemployment issue, we're also addressing the under-unemployment issue. And that has come about because of the expansion of natural gas, and it's come about because of the interest in LNG. Our community colleges, our universities, and our craft training centers are ramping up at full speed to meet the demand that we have right now for qualified technicians, for welders, for environmental engineers, for petroleum engineers, and the list goes on and on. But being able to meet the needs of the underemployed has uh, really been a tremendous godsend out of this Eagle Ford Shale move and out of this LNG business that we're, we're embarking upon at this point in time. I'd like to describe one particular energy project to illustrate the vast economic and job growth that can result from expanding exports of LNG Chenier Energy is a company that is building a, a facility down on our coast, on our ship channel. Uh, they're going to take 673 acres. Uh, it's a newly expanded, newly dredged ship channel. And their investment, as a previous speaker uh, identified, rep represents about $11 billion in an investment. Uh, it's similar to a, actually an LNG facility that they put in Sabine Pass, Louisiana. We're anticipating 1,800 construction jobs over a five-year period. 3,000 jobs at the peak of construction. You know, just imagine what 3,000 new construction jobs would do in anybody's district uh, as an influx of uh, capital, an influx of energy, and an influx of a trained, skilled labor force. Once a project is built, it is estimated that the Corpus Christi Chenier facility will support 8,000 jobs in the region permanently. One LNG facility will benefit not just South Texas, but also the national economy. The Corpus Christi facility is projected to require over $2 billion in U.S. sourced equipment and to have a positive impact, and this is what the chairman was alluding to, and I think this is the key point that I'd like to make today. It can influence our balance of trade with exports up to almost $10 billion annually. You know, the numbers are just overwhelming when we consider what uh, we will be able to do with that LNG. While these economic benefits for the nation are important, the export of LNG is important for building stronger ties with our allies abroad, freeing countries from economic oppression through threats to their natural gas supplies, and supporting the use of safer and more environmentally sound natural gas over other energy sources. As a result of preparing, really for the last 20 years, for the Panama Canal's expansion to handle larger ships, including LNG tankers, the Port of Corpus Christi is ready to support increased exports of LNG. 
In the past decade, the Port of Corpus Christi has invested $25 million, leveraged with the federal government's investment of nearly $60 million to deepen and extend a ship channel to accommodate those LNG exports. That investment has attracted over $22 billion in new industrial growth in our region. The investment, uh, that investment has really transformed a formerly economically disadvantaged area. Finally, my final comment is that the Port of Corpus Christi has, is a strategic military port. Having the ability to export LNG out of our facility strengthens our position, and we are very proud of the support that we give to this nation in terms of being a military, strategic military port, and we think the LNG exporting strengthens that, that position. Thank you very much.